Hi guys, it's Jordan from PMP Campers. I'm just going to be doing a hand of a video on this Auto Cruise Pioneer. Um, this is based on a 2009 Peugeot Boxer chassis, and uh, I believe it to be a 2.2, um, and that would be a chain-driven engine. Well, I can see there it is, 2.2. So um, I normally start under the bonnet, so I'll do that. So we've got the washer fluid up on the top left-hand side, power steering fluid and engine coolant. Then got the brake fluid attached to the servo just behind it and the engine oil filling point just down there. There is also an engine oil dipstick just here at the very front. If we carry on over to the right hand side, we've got the air filter sits inside this box here at the bottom. And because the engine battery on these sits under the floor in the cab, just in front of the, the passenger seat, you have got a positive terminal under this little cover here and a negative terminal just here so if you wanted to jump start the vehicle positive there negative here and that'll give you direct power to the engine battery so following on to the front near side we've got the bonnet release handle just inside the passenger door um, adjustments are all over the place on these seats. They are really, really good. Um, you've got this one here that does the backrest and this one over here on the right, which will do the swivel seat base. So you can adjust them however you want to. Really, really easy. We've then got the fuel filling point just inside this uh, little cover. They've made it like that so that it kind of follows the shape of the body naturally. So you can probably tell the bodywork on this particular vehicle is absolutely fantastic. If I just stand here to the side, really, really straight. Um, all the stickers are in good nick. There is a little bit of a, a break here in this one, but you know, not particularly noticeable. Um, so loads of storage in this first, first little lower locker. Um, goes all the way through to the right. And you've got a bit of a, like a wet locker there as well. That closes up obviously nice and easily from there. Next door to that, we've got the hookup point. So having access to a hookup cable, having that plugged in makes the world of difference. Um, it means that you don't have to worry about your leisure battery's voltage. Also means you get access to any of your 240 volt appliances, uh, such as in this case, the boiler works on either gas or electric. So this is the freshwater inlet point um, and does have the filter on here as well. Um, so this is a Truma thing that they sort of initiated around this sort of time. Um, so you've got the external shower point and the pump to draw the water in on the left-hand side. There will be a point for that inside the vehicle as well. So pump sucks the water in through whatever reservoir thing you've got here on the floor. And then you can change the, 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 the filter. Um, whenever you'd like to basically ultra flow filter is what it's called so further towards the back just behind the door here we have got these two vents now these are quite important vents really so if you have the fridge lit up on gas you'll be able to feel hot air coming out through the top right hand side of this top vent which i can do right now um, and what that tells us is that the fridge is working and it's working as it should if you've got the fridge lit up on gas, or you think you've got it lit up on gas, this is another way of just double checking that it's working. Um, you know, physically putting your hand there and feeling the heat proves to you that it's on. Got the Omnistore awning along the top of the vehicle and an awning light just here in the middle as well. So that when you've got this wound out, you've got a light underneath there. This little button just here at the bottom is a rocker switch for the step and the window part of the door here does open up using these little catches has also got blackout blind and fly screen that comes down from the top so at the back we've got the twin reversing camera which i think i fitted to the vehicle uh, the last time we sold it um bike rack here on the back as well and as you can see again bodywork absolutely lovely i can't see anything to pick up on that whatsoever 
if I'm honest. Um, been really, really well kept in its ownership. So, uh, over onto the offside. Down low at the back, we've got this, which is your wastewater drain off point. So if you want to drain out the wastewater from the uh, waste tank, you do so from this black hose at the very back here. We've then got your Thetford toilet cassette. So to take the cassette out, lift up on the little yellow tab and pull it towards you. You can then pull it all the way out if you want to. And all you need to know really is that you drain it out from this point just here, this little gray cap, and you hold down the little yellow button there at the back in order to drain it out properly. All the way back in like that until it clicks. Um, and that's then completely back in place as it should be. You've got a fresh water flush on this one here, which is this pipe on the left. So that means you haven't got to worry about any separate flush fluids above here. Uh, and that would be normally your pink fluid, but it comes straight from your fresh tank. So you haven't got to worry about it. Blue fluid goes back inside the cassette once you've finished, um, once it's emptied. But that's it really. So um, gas locker, you can see proper LPG sticker on it and the correct ventilation as well. Um, so I've always quite liked this style of gas locker where it comes down from the side rather than opening up or being down low. Uh, so you've got kind of like a chest height gas locker here. Um, so you've got space for two of these six kilo propane bottles in here if you want them. Uh, at the moment there is just the one because we only give away one with the sale. Um, so to turn the bottle on, we go anti-clockwise around to the left. And to turn it off, we go clockwise all the way down around to the right. You need to make sure that you turn these bottles off before you start driving. That's really important. Uh, but otherwise, you're absolutely fine. Um, the actual um, regulator here, you haven't got to do anything with this. You don't have to turn this dial here. The only reason you would turn this is if you were doing a test from this testing point here. But that's obviously for us to do, really. Um, but yeah, that's all that is there, really. The only other thing on the outside is the boiler vent just down here. Uh, a lot like the fridge vent that I showed you, you can put your hand over it and check that it's working. This is exactly the same, where you can put your hand over it and actually you can see, I don't know if you can see on the video or not, but you can see the condensation coming out from it either side. So you can see physically and feel and actually hear that it's working um, anyway. But uh, if you want to just triple check that it's working, you can put your hand over it. Okay, so if I just hop into the cab. Now, as I said, we have sold this particular vehicle before to the previous owner. Um, we know it's been well kept and you know we've looked after it for them as well. So, um, you know, really low mileage, 24,000 miles. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's completely kind of, you can see that it's been well kept when, you, when you're in the vehicle. It's just brilliant, really. Um, so, You've got the six speed manual gearbox. You've got the cruise control from that dial just there. Uh, you've got the factory fitted Peugeot head unit up there and your heater controls from the middle. You've then also got your electric adjusting mirrors from this little joystick part here. You got the fitted blinds in the cab, so you could basically loosen these two bits off here, push this one down, push this one up, and then it will come to the middle. Same on the other side, and then they meet together with a magnetic strip here. Um, so that's a complete blind for the front. Obviously, as I say, you've got your twin reversing camera up there as well. Um, steering wheel controls as well. There's another factory extra uh, on these ones. So I think that's about it, really. So what I'll do now is I'll just spin around and jump into the back so I can show you what we've got going on back here. So as soon as you walk in the habitation door, you'll notice to your left, you've got this Auto Cruise branded uh, energy management system, it's called. So this is basically your, your um, control panel. So um, pretty simple how they work. You've essentially got a main on and off switch here on the left, which you press and hold to get to come on. You can then, um, okay. right, so over on the right, sorry, um, is slightly different to the other ones I've used recently. So um, you've got various switches over on the right-hand side. So you've got lights, which will isolate the lights inside the vehicle. 
Volts will tell you the voltages in both batteries. So you've got engine voltage and leisure voltage. The amps. So this is saying that we're drawing about 6.6 oh, 6 .6 amps at the moment. So that's going to be the fan that I've got running, the lights I've got running, the boiler I've got running. All of that sort of stuff adds up and it shows you on there how many amps are being drawn. Info, don't need to worry about that. Amps from the solar, I mean, we're inside and I'm not sure this one has a solar panel on it or not. I'll have to double check that. Um, water pump, so we've got the water pump turned on at the moment. That means we're gonna have pressure at the water taps. And then we've got the waste level here. So it's waste okay and water level. So we're nearly empty on the fresh water. Um, so that is how you use that one. So basically, you know, the main ones you're going to want to use are going to be the lights, the water pump and the volts. So you have to keep on top of the, uh, you know, how many volts you got in the battery. Um, if you start running down below about 11, you know, you need to plug in on the hookup. Um, but yeah, that's it really. So that's a control panel. Once you've got those bits on, you will then be able to go ahead and use the vehicle however you like to really. So you can then use all your lights. Um, all the lights under the counters here will all come to life as well. Um, when the water pump is turned on, the first thing you're going to want to do is come over to the tap just here. And this is really, really simple, but this is just something you really have to do. It's really important. Um, so turn the tap to the right hand side and pull the water through, which is going to be your cold side first. So if we do that. So we've got good pressure, no air coming out. It's not coughing, it's not splattering. And when I turn it off, the pump turns off as well. All right, so that's absolutely perfect. That means we're at pr good pressure. There's no leaks uh, and the, you know, the, the cold side is good. So if I turn this to the left now, to the hot side, hoping for the exact same thing, really. Brilliant, okay. So that's exactly what I wanted to see on both cold and hot. And the reason I need to do that is because if the, mainly for the hot side, really, but if you draw the water through on the hot side and you don't get anything coming through apart from air and coughing and spluttering, all it really means is the boiler isn't quite full yet. So the reason that that will be, if I just show you, I reckon it'll be down here. Yep. So what you've got is this little yellow handle or little yellow tab. And what the little yellow tab does is it drains the water out from inside the boiler. So if, for example, you, um, I don't know, if it was coming up to winter and you wanted to winterize the van, um, what you need to do is you need to drain that water out from inside the boiler. And the only way to do that is by lifting that little tab up, right? And it will drain all 10 liters out onto the floor. Now, ideally you would do that from all of the water taps and the tanks and everything, so drain everything out. But the boiler is the most important one, really, because that's the one that will cause you real problems. Um, you know, if you leave all 10 litres inside of it and it freezes, you're going to be forking out for a new boiler. So really important that you drain that out before winter. But when you come to refilling it again, the reason I was showing you about the tap up there is because when you turn this back to its closed position where it is now and go to fill it back up, you'll get nothing but air coming through for a couple of minutes until it starts to fill itself back up again and then the water will come through like you've just seen at the tap. So the water coming through at the tap nice and clearly like it was just then just shows us that the boiler's full and that we can go ahead and use it however you want. So that is the drain for that just there. I'll just have a little look in this down here. So these are our twin leisure batteries. Um, so we've got two what look like 85 amp hour yeah, 85 amp hour leisure batteries in there. Um, so if you ever needed any access to those for any reason, that is where you go to for that. So hopefully that made sense about the water pump. It's just, it's just like a safety thing. I like to sort of point all of that out because if you try and light the boiler up on the gas um, and it's not got any water in it, then you're gonna run into an overheating sort of issue uh, or at least it just won't work properly. Um, but also, you know, it's just good good practice to make sure that you've got water coming through both sides. It just proves to you that everything's good and you're all pressurised. So just a little tip, make sure you do that when you come in. So you've got some more storage at the top. The original plates and things holder in there. 
so we've got in this particular one because it's a british built vehicle they tend to give you the option of using everything on electric as well so you've got the electric ring up here as well as your three burners um i very rarely run through these burners to be fair because they're pretty straightforward but they're literally just ignition and gas valve same goes for the grill and the oven both just as easy as that the cooker on the mains will only work when the hookup is plugged in and it will give you a red light here coming on to, saying that it's working basically so we've got the gas isolators just down here so if you wanted to isolate any of the appliances specifically you can do that from there if i just run you through those diagrams so the top one is the cooker boiler fridge space heater underneath here we've probably got a plug yeah so that plug just there is the plug for the mains uh, hot ring on the hob okay so the next bit i'm going to show you is going to be the fridge so this is a dometic three-way fridge this is the sort of industry standard uh, on these fridges um, so what you've essentially got is a lock and unlock just here so if i slide that to the right there i now can't open this fridge door and now i can um, so we've got three different ways that we can use the fridge we can use it on gas we can use it on 240 volt electric or we can use it on 12 volt so 12 volt mains gas so for the moment i haven't got the hookup cable plugged in and i haven't got the engine running so i can't use the hookup symbol or the 12 volt so i have got the gas on all I have to do in that situation, if I want to light it up on the gas, is once to the right and it will light up. Then got a temperature gauge over here on the right, which will then in turn turn the gas on and off as and when it needs to. Same goes for the next one down. If we were hooked up on the mains, we would then get a green light here coming up on the mains hookup one. And then we still got the uh, temperature on the right. And the last one, as I said, that is a 12 volt only. So that's for when your engine is running. So if I can just explain, um, with the these three-way fridges, the way that you have to use them, um, the only two ways that will actually get the fridge cold initially, like by itself, is gonna be the mains or the, or the gas. So the 12 volt functionality one there, the one that looks like a battery, is essentially just for holding the temperature inside the fridge whilst you're driving. Um, and it uses the split charging system to do that. So, you know, if you were going to go away on holiday tomorrow morning, for example, you would really want to light the fridge up on gas or use it on the mains overnight with all of your stuff inside of it. And then by the morning when you go to leave, you know, you'll be ready to switch over to 12 volt and it'll already be cold. When you get to where you're going, switch back to one of the other two, either gas or mains, and that's it, that's how you use it. Full-sized standalone table inside this little hidden cupboard over on the left. And then I will run you through how to use this, which is your heater. So this is the Trumatic uh, Ultra Heat, all right, and this is a unbelievably reliable uh, heater. Now we, it's, again, there's another sort of industry standard part. Um, only slight difference with this one is that it hasn't got the electronic ignition. So you do have to remember to use the piezo igniter on the right, but not a problem at all. It's very, very easy. Um, so what you've got essentially is a little peep hole down here. And if I can just get it right, there you go. You can just about see the little gas flame in there. Sorry about my shaky hand. Um, so that's your little peephole to see the flame. Now on the right, you've got the actual gas valve itself, which has got number zero on the left, all the way through one to 10. Um, so all you have to do, if I, I can just explain it actually, all you have to do to actually get it to work is turn the valve around to one or two or three, push down on it whilst you're pressing on the piezo igniter, and then have a little look down there and you should have a little pilot flame. So whilst you're still holding on to that, let that pilot flame warm up and then twist it around to where I'm at now, about sort of six or seven or higher, and you'll get the main flame kick in. And it's when you get the main flame kicking in that you really get the heat coming through. Um, 
If you find that the main flame doesn't want to stay on, all you have to do is push that button back down again to get that pilot back on and then lift it back up. All it means is that the thermocouple isn't hot enough yet to allow the gas to come through fully. So it's just like your classic sort of uh, gas heater in a house. It works exactly the same way. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, but it's super easy. Um, on the left of that heater, you've got this, which is a fan function as well. So because this is blown air heating, we've got these little beige vents around the vehicle. There is one in the bathroom as well. Uh, but what it does is it basically draws that heat that you're creating from that flame and pumps it around the vehicle much more evenly uh, than having it just coming out through the front of this. So you can press this little switch here to the left and then select from one through, through to five. I'm just gonna switch this off now, all the way back around to zero. And what I will do and what I always say is that I always recommend to leave this fan running uh, for about five or 10 minutes once you've turned this off. Um, and the simple reason for that is it, these get too hot, really. Um, for what they are, they get too hot. And what you'll find is when you go to um, switch it off, if you don't have the fan on, the amount of heat that comes through these is unbelievable. And really, the only real issue with that is that these cupboards will start to peel. The wooden veneer on them, or the wooden sort of fablon trim on them, will start to come away. And doing this by allowing the air to be pumped around through these vents, it really allows it to sort of be spread out a lot more evenly rather than just coming out just here. Uh, and it tends to save these drawers and cupboards that are around it. So that's the only reason I say that, but that's, that's why I would say that. Just turn the fridge off. Okay, so you've got a couple of um, 240 volt sockets and a 12 volt socket and your TV aerial point there as well. So really, Auto Cruise were saying, you know, this is going to be where you want your TV, basically. Um, absolutely stacks of storage all the way around the vehicle. So when it comes to that TV aerial point, you have got the TV aerial itself, which is this tilt and turn aerial and the aerial booster over here on the right. So you will need to push this up um, and get it to lock on basically and have the booster on if you want any decent signal going through to that aerial point. Um, so I'll just have a little sip of my water. So the last thing I need to just run you through basically is going to be the boiler now. So um, it's the Truma Ultra Store. So Truma making the uh, boiler and the heater. Sometimes they do them in a package where it's a Truma Combi boiler where that you know basically means it does the heating and the hot water but this is separate, so you know, you've got separate heater and separate boiler. It's not a problem, and in fact, I find that we get less issues in this sort of uh, separate way of doing it, but um, there we go. So, Ultra Store is the boiler. So if you wanna use the boiler on the gas, this is the dial for it just here. So what we've got is a temperature gauge in the middle, so 30 all the way through to 70, and that is just literally the temperature of the water that you want to be made in the boiler. You then got on and off just by switching the whole outside ring straight down and it will light the boiler up. And that really is it. That's all you have to do. So now, after I've had this on for, well, five minutes before I started the video, I turned it on. And let's just see, see if we've got any hot water yet. Yep, that is pretty hot. I mean, I had it set to about 40, I think. That's pretty hot to me, yep. <laughs> it's definitely hot. So uh, probably, I don't know if you can see the steam coming off it or anything. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, half an hour to get that water nice and hot. It, it's no time at all, really. Um, so as quick as that, and uh, obviously if you use up all that water, it will then just be another half an hour to get that to heat back up again. So, um, you know, it works really, really well. So if you want to use the boiler on the gas, that's the place for it there. Um, you do also have the option of using it on the mains. So if you do have a mains cable plugged in, you've got a little switch down here, which is for heating the water up on the mains. So essentially all that means is you don't get a temperature uh, option on that one. It's just kind of on or off. Um, but after about the same sort of time, half an hour or so, you'll have hot water coming through the taps. Um, but as I say, you will have to have your hookup plugged in in order to use that. 
So under this little cover, we've got this box here, uh, which is essentially the uh, the brains uh, kind of thing to do with your control panel. It's almost like a power supply unit. Um, and it's just, like I say, it's just the brains for that control panel in there. Looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. But there you go. Leave that covered up so you don't sort of accidentally touch any of it. A couple of fuses down there as well. Um, so if you do have any problems with anything electrical, it's more than likely going to be a fuse down there. Uh, these lights here are mains powered. All right, so if you're wondering why they're not working, it's because they're mains powered and I believe they're touch sensitive ones uh, from there. But yeah, absolutely loads of storage in this van. A few extra bits and pieces. So we've got, uh, these are the screens for blocking out the front windows up here. And you've got your awning winder here as well. So I think the last thing I need to show you is gonna be the bathroom. Unless there's anything in here to show you. Uh, oh. yeah, okay. So the original carpets are here as well. Let me just get that in properly. Original carpets are in here. And you can actually get this little uh, locker opens up to the bathroom as well. I mean, I can only imagine, I might be re being really silly here, but I can only imagine it so that you can get your clothes out or something whilst you're in here, so you don't have to come out and do that. But yeah, it's a nice idea. Um, so yeah, the bathroom in this one is kind of like a, you might call it like a modular uh, sort of bathroom where you have to pull this part out to make the, the shower room. Um, but very easy how you do that. Pull this little piece out and then you can another one at the bottom pull that out and then you can pull this unit all the way around once you're in the shower that then makes a pretty good sized shower unit this bit on the right also comes over and meets just here so it does make a really nice sized shower unit um get rid of that. so yeah that's that's how you make up the shower unit um putting that back there they've got these so that you don't it doesn't fly open when you're driving basically so the tap and the shower are the same thing all right so if you want to use it as a tap you do have to pull that down and put it into this little slot here and you've got the hot and cold point just there to the right the toilet is normally the only bit that i actually run through because it's you know the only bit that you might not know how to use so the seat swivels around and you've got a blue button at the back so press on that and that'll pump around the fluid into the bowl. Pulling on this handle here, releases that water and puts it into the tank, or the cassette, sorry, and then push it back. And that's it, that's all you have to do. Very easy, very simple. Um, light switch is just here. And that's it. So, um, I think I've covered everything there, and I don't know if... I'm just trying to make sure I have, but... Yes, yeah, so I don't think there's anything else that I've missed out, but if there is, or if there's anything you want going over again, just let us know. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much.